to keep your work and your personal life organized? Do you feel like you're constantly juggling, juggling tasks and never getting anything done? Are your kids so messy that you don't know how to get anything accomplished? If so, it's time to develop some organizational skills. And this video will cover these following topics. Why organization is so important, the areas of your life that might need organization, and how you can develop your organizational skills, how you can teach these skills to your children, and a few facts and questions that most people have about different organizational skills. What is the importance of organization? Organizational skills are crucial for success in both personal and professional life for a variety of reasons. I've always practiced organizational skills since I was little, and it's something that I think just like comes natural, part of my personality. However, after growing up with three sisters with ADHD and having two children on the autism spectrum, I find organization a topic of concern for many people. What has come so easily for me does not always come so easily for others, and therefore it takes more practice and hard work to develop this skill. Just because someone with struggles with a skill doesn't mean it isn't doable, and that if you just have to live in a messy environment. Did you know that a lack of organizational skills can impact your mental health? If you're unorganized, it can decrease your productivity, cause stress and anxiety, cause you to be late, and not utilize your time efficiently. Being unorganized can also cause you a lack of poor decisions and decrease your reputation. This is why being organized can be such a crucial aspect of people's lives, and it's an extremely important skill even beyond just academics for yourself and for your children. When you're organized, you can work more efficiently and effectively. You'll be able to prioritize your task and focus on what's more most important, which will help you to get more done in less time. When you're disorganized, it can be overwhelming and stressful. By developing organizational skills, you can reduce stress levels by having a clear understanding of what needs to be done and when it needs to get done. Time is precious and a resource and organizational skills can help you make the most of it by prioritizing tasks and developing a routine. You can manage your time effectively and ensure that you are making progress towards your goals. When you're organized, you have a clear picture in your priorities and what needs to be done. It can help you make better decisions and avoid getting uh, sidetracked by tasks. In professional settings, being organized can enhance your reputation and make you feel more reliable. This can lead to increased opportunities and greater success in your career. Organizational skills are essential for success in all areas of your life. You could even go as far as to break down your level 10 life areas from my previous video and create a whole list of different ways that you could be more organized. I could also create a whole blog post and website specifically for being organized. However, my own goal is just to give you just, just enough to help and comprise you with those resources if you'd like to delve into a deeper understanding and practice of organizational skills. You can increase productivity, reduce stress, and manage your time effect efficiently and be make better decisions and increase your reputation. Keeping your home organized can improve the quality of your life and reduce stress. This includes organizing your clothes, drawers, cabinets, as well as your living spaces, clean, keeping your living spaces clean and tidy. Oh man, I was a clean freak as a teen. My room would be spotless and everything that I had was in its place. And But then after I got married and had kids, that is what made my world turn upside down. And I had to live with the clutter lifestyle. If I'm honest, I'm still there. Managing a home can be a full-time job, but I'm struggling with it and working two jobs while starting a third and still working on managing it all. Chore charts are amazing if you can get your kids to do them without telling them over and over again. Let's say home organization is a work in progress and especially when you have kids. Um, I go through phases and though we have a list of daily chores and weekly chores and monthly chores and one room a month that we do a deep clean and reorganization on, we try to keep it going and maintain the organization the best that we can. 
So organizing your time is essential for achieving your goals and managing your daily tasks. And this includes planning your schedule, prioritizing your task, and managing different distractions. My time is so important to me because I only get a small portion every day and I want to be able to use it to the best of my ability. I'm definitely a go-getter and I've always been that way, but I want to be productive and get a lot of things done. It's kind of in my genes. <laughs> so I utilize a Google Calendar for all of my time management needs. Um, kind of like I have right here. Um, at work, I'll put all of my appointments in and then repeat them as required. I'm not showing them here because there, there's a lot of sensitive information on there. Um, then I add all my other things on my to-do list and most importantly, I add in time down to relax and just take a walk. One of the things that's been very helpful for me is this um, Best Self Journal. It has a habit tracker in here and then you can also set um, different weekly goals and objectives and do some self-reflection and what, what your big wins are and the goals and progress that you're making. Um, and then it also has a way for you to write like the things that you're grateful for, your goals, your targets, um, what, what would make today great. It has a list of all of the things that you can do and then a journal that you can write um, an entry in as well. So it's definitely one of my favorite tools for time management and organization because it, you're doing so much all in one. Organizing your finances can help you to stay on top of your bills, track your expenses, and save money. Um, and this includes creating a budget, tracking your expenses, and organizing some financial documents. My resources for this is usually the most amazing app, Every Dollar, and if you haven't tried it, you need to try it. Um, so that's what I use weekly to track our expenses. I haven't upgraded it because doing it manually just hasn't been that terrible for us, but in the beginning of my marriage and adulting, uh, it probably would have really been worth the investment. Dave Ramsey is the financial guru of all time when you're talking about financial needs. So if there's anything in the financial world that you need to know about, that's who I would turn to. So go to every dollar um, on the website and you can also download it on your app and it's absolutely amazing for budgeting. I also have a, um, a freebie for a monthly re review that my husband and I are gonna start doing this month. Organizing your relationships can help you maintain healthy and positive connections with the people in your life. And this includes organizing your social calendar, prioritizing time, prioritizing loved time with loved ones, and managing your communication. And I find it odd that relationships is something that you really need to organization, but seriously, how is anyone going to keep up strong relationships without the work needed to do so? So the only way to do that is to get organized in whatever works best for you. What I've chosen to do in this area is I set an alarm on my phone for a specific day of the week and time so that I'm making sure that I'm connecting with a family member or a friend during that time that I know they might be available whether that is calling them through FaceTime or sending them a text message and just checking on them with maybe that agreed upon time or even if it's not just so that they randomly get some kind of message from me. Now it doesn't always work and sometimes it may be a text with a meme or something just to start a conversation and let them know that they are worth me talking to them. I also started to join a book club once a month and I typically reach out to a friend of mine for us to go for a hike, we run errands together, or we go get a bite to eat about once a month. Remember that there aren't a lot of people who prioritize and organize this, so don't feel like you don't uh, want to do it if they aren't going to put in the work too. Um, keep trying and if it sticks, you know they want to do it too. And if it doesn't, well, you can't catch a ball that isn't throwing back to you. So try it out and then if it's not working, find someone else to connect with. So keeping your workspace organized can help you be more productive and reduce stress. And this includes organizing your desk, your files, I have some files down here. Um, and I found that having a huge workspace, um, which a lot of counselors have large desk spaces, that, so sometimes that can be nice to like spread out, 
um, when you're sorting things. And I just found that my piles just start to continue to stack up and up and up. And I'll have a stack here and I'll have a stack there and then I'll have another one there because I have so many things going on at one time. However, my personal solution for this workspace was to actually make my desk smaller. Um, so this is my desk at home, but at work it's a little bit different. When I do this, I force myself to actually create a home for the things that I'm working on. I can pull it out, work on it, and then put it back where it goes. Organizing your health and wellness routines can help you maintain a good physical and mental health. And this includes organizing your workout schedule, your meal planning, and tracking your health metrics. Health fitness has always been a huge part of my life and something I always feel I'm working to improve. It's always been difficult and organizational skills isn't, so that helps me get to where I want to be. Practicing meal planning and creating a workout schedule has greatly helped me achieve some of my health and wellness goals. And I really like Biceps After Babies. It's a macro program um, that was really amazing a few years ago. And then I also still really enjoy Claire P. Thomas's app called CPT Fit. How can you develop your organizational skills? Make a to-do list. Start each day by making a to-do list and write down all the tasks that you need to complete and prioritize them in order of importance. This will help you to stay on track and ensure that you're focusing on the most critical task at first. Use a planner or calendar to keep track of appointments, meetings, and deadlines. This is going to help you to stay organized, ensure that you don't miss any important events. I like to use um, Google Calendar for mine. Set short-term and long-term goals for yourself. Having a clear idea of what you want to accomplish will help you to stay focused and motivated. One of the greatest tools that I have is the Best Self uh, Companies Planner and Journal All-in-One. Break down larger tasks into smaller, more manageable steps, and this is going to make the tasks feel less overwhelming and help you to stay on track. Get rid of any items that you no longer need or use, and this is going to help you free up space and reduce clutter, making it easier to stay organized. Develop a routine, daily, weekly, or monthly, that includes time for work, exercise, and relaxation. Having a set schedule is going to help you to stay organized and ensure that you're making time for all the important aspects in your life. Avoid distractions by turning off your phone and email notifications when you're working on a task. And this is going to help you to stay focused and ensure that you're making progress. Be willing to adjust your plans and adapt to change as they arise. Being flexible will help you to stay organized and ensure that you're able to handle any kind of unexpected situation. How can you teach organizational skills to your children? Lean by example. The best way to teach organizational skills is to model them with yourself. Demonstrate how you organize your workspace, how you organize and plan your day, and how you prioritize your tasks. Explain the benefits of organization. Help others to understand why organizational skills are important and how they can benefit from being organized. Show them how being organized can increase their productivity, reduce their stress, and improve their decision-making skills. Turn it into a game. Organizing doesn't have to be boring. Turn it into a game by challenging your children to complete tasks within a certain time limit or rewarding them for achieving a specific goal that you've had for them. Break it down. Organizational skills can be overwhelming, so it's essential to break down into smaller, more manageable steps. Start by teaching basic skills like making a to-do list or keeping a calendar and then gradually build on those skills. Use a visual aid. So a visual aid like a diagram or flowchart can be helpful for teaching organizational skills. Even a chore chart can be very beneficial. Use them to illustrate how tasks are connected or how to be able to break down tasks into smaller steps. Provide hands-on practice. Organizational skills require practice, so give others the opportunity to practice what they've learned. Assign a task and then require organization or and provide feedback to them for improvement. Set goals for your children to work towards, like organizing their play or area or cleaning their room. This can give them a sense of accomplishment or motivation to continue improving their organizational skills. Provide feedback. So providing positive feedback and encouragement when your children make progress can help them feel proud of their accomplishments and motivate them to continue learning and improving their organizational skills. Involve your children in the planning of activities and events. This can help them learn how to manage their time and prioritize tasks. 
and give them a voice into what you're trying to do and accomplish. And they can see and demonstrate how you are planning and organizing different events in your, for your life. Be patient with your children. Remember that learning organizational skills takes time and effort. So being patient with those that you're teaching and providing support and encouragement along the way is going to be much more beneficial than ridiculing them or pointing out every single little mistake that they're making. So celebrate their successes. Anytime that you see them organizing something or doing something really great in that area, celebrate that success with those that you're teaching. Acknowledge when they've made progress and provide the feedback to encourage them to continue building their organizational skills. Here are a few uh, facts and questions that people typically have about organization. So the first question is, what are some tips for staying organized at work? And here are a few. Keep a to-do list and prioritize tasks. Use a calendar or planner to schedule appointments and deadlines. Keep a tidy workspace by regularly clearing out clutter. Utilize digital tools like project management software or task tracking apps. Take breaks to avoid burnout and maintain focus. Question number two, how can I declutter my home and keep it organized? You want to start small and focus on one area at a time. Donate or sell items that you no longer need or use. I'm creating a system where I set a time once a month to declutter a specific room and that's when I will focus on donating and putting in a pile of those items that I want to take to the Salvation Army. Use storage solutions like baskets, bins, and shelves to keep items organized. I like to also add a little label so that everybody else in the house knows exactly what belongs in that place. Develop a routine for regularly tidying up and putting things away. Have a specific time that you're going to do that every day, every week, and every month. Avoid bringing in new items that you don't really need, and then if you bring something in, you might want to think about taking something else out especially things like clothes. So what are the benefits of being organized? Um, and we've discussed some of these already. It reduces your stress and anxiety. It increases your productivity and efficiency. It improves your time management skills. It helps you to get better focus and concentration. And really it can also enhance that sense of control and confidence in yourself. And question number four, how can I organize my time effectively? Set clear goals, prioritize tasks, create a schedule or routine that works for you, use time blocking um, to dedicate specific periods of time to tasks. So I will say I'm going to clean my house for 30 minutes at this particular time. I'm going to dedicate to making videos for this specific amount of time. I'm going to dedicate this specific time to relax in the hot tub so that I'm making sure I'm taking breaks as, as well. Eliminate distractions like social media or unnecessary notifications. It can be a good idea just to turn your phone completely off sometimes. Take breaks to avoid burnout and maintain your focus. Um, question number five, what are some strategies or, for organizing your digital life? So you can use folders and labels to organize emails and files. I even have a list in my email section of um, specific things like if I get a email on testing. I'm going to move that document into my testing folder so that I know where to go to look to find testing materials. If I get something from my county office um, that's like an important document for, from them, I will have a, a specific place to put that in as well. Um, so also make sure that you're regularly cleaning out and deleting unnecessary files and emails. It might be a good idea to just schedule that in at least once a week or once a month depending on what your needs are. Use productivity tools like time tracking apps or browser extensions that can be very helpful. Keep your desktop and digital files organized and easy to access and set boundaries and limit your time spent on digital devices. Question number six is, how can I organize my finances and stay on top of bills? The biggest thing is like, just set the budget and then stick to it. Do what you say you're going to do, right? And not spend things on things that you say you're not going to spend it on. Use a financial management tool like apps or spreadsheets. I recommend it every dollar app. Automate your bill payments to avoid late fees. Um, we do that. All, for just about every single bill. The only thing that I end up having to pay for a check for is like cafeteria fees for school. Organize your financial documents and statements. Monitor your accounts regularly to avoid fraud or errors. 
Question number seven, how can I organize my closet and keep my clothes neat and tidy? Regularly clean out items that no longer fit or are no longer worn. I can usually do this by season. So every spring, winter, fall, summer, I'm reorganizing my clothes, cleaning them out, getting things new in that I want to, to have, and then taking out all the old stuff. I uh, use storage, storage solutions like hangers, bins, shelves to keep your items organized. Arrange items by category or color for easy access. I put a lot of my dresses on the top of my um, closet and on the bottom I have a, a section for just my pants and a section for just my tops. What are some tips for organizing your kitchen or pantry? Group similar items together in cabinets and drawers. Use clear containers or labels to keep items organized in the pantry. Regularly clean out and dispose of expired items. Just mark on that calendar exactly when you plan on cleaning out your kitchen and your pantry item. Um, I would say at least once a month. Use storage solutions like shelves or bins to maximize space. Keep your kitchen tidy by regularly cleaning and putting away items every single day. How can you teach your organizational skills to your children? Start by modeling those good organizational habits. Encourage your children to clean up after themselves and put things away. Use storage bins, solutions, um, closet organizers. Set clear routines for cleaning and tidying up and reward those ch your children for good organizational habits and when you see them being successful. So how can you stay organized while you're traveling? Um, I like to use packing cubes, um, organizers to keep things separated and easily accessible. Create a packing list to ensure you don't forget anything. I usually print something off online. Use digital tools like travel apps or itinerary planners. Keep important documents and items in a secure and easily accessible place. And regularly clean out your luggage to avoid excess clutter, particularly if you travel often. Um, what are some strategies for staying organized when you're working from home? Make sure that you're setting clear work hours and stick to that schedule. Use a designated workspace that's free from distractions. Keep your workspace tidy and organized. Take breaks to avoid burnout and maintain focus. Use productivity tools like time tracking apps or browser extensions. Um, and how can you prioritize your task and manage your to-do list effectively? Start by identifying the most important task and tackling that one first. Consider your deadlines, your urgency, and your impact when prioritizing tasks. Use a task management tool or an app to keep track of those tasks and your deadlines. I usually set three specific things each day. These are my most important things that I want to accomplish today. And then I go back in and tackle that to-do list. Be realistic with your time and your schedule and avoid overcommitting to things. Review your to-do list regularly to adjust priorities and ensure progress. You're going to have to make sure that you're going to be able to be flexible. What are some common mistakes that people make when trying to get organized? Um, first, to start with large and overwhelming projects instead of breaking it down into smaller tasks. And a lot of times people that have anxiety or depression will feel so overwhelmed with that organization that they just don't do it and they continue to avoid it and avoid it until it piles up. But it's really important to practice organization so that you don't get anxious or depressed over um, being very disorganized. Sometimes they underestimate the time and the effort needed to get organized. I know I can typically do this, um, especially when I'm trying to like make these videos. Um, failing to create a realistic and sustainable system that fits their needs and lifestyle. Neglecting to maintain their organiza organizational system and letting clutter build up again being too rigid and inflexible, which can also lead to burnout and frustration. So how can you maintain your organizational systems and avoid backsliding into that disorganization? You want to regularly review and adjust your system as, as needed. Schedule time for decluttering and tidying up regularly. Avoid procrastination on tasks and letting them pile up. Set reminders or use apps to keep yourself accountable. And make organization a habit and integrate it into your daily routine. And how can you create balance between being organized and being flexible in your daily life? First, you want to prioritize and schedule those important tasks, but also allow for flexibility adjustments. Like for instance, today I set my times that I'm going to create a blog post. I'm going to create a free um, organizational um, pamphlet for you guys to, to be able to use. And then I was also going to um, do my podcast. 
but things took a little longer than I was expecting them to and uh, this video is a little bit longer than some my last couple of videos and I had a lot more to say about organization so it just led me into um, having to be flexible about maybe potentially waiting to do my podcast until tomorrow. Avoid overcommitting and leave some margin for unexpected events or tasks. Set boundaries and say no to unnecessary commitments or requests. Be adaptable and open to changing your schedule or your plans if needed. And take breaks and prioritize self-care to avoid burnout and maintain balance. So part of today I spent uh, like about three hours working on some things before I came back to work on this video and I decided to, to take that break and my family went to a um, festival that our town was having and we stayed there for a couple of hours. So just know I'm trying to practice these things as well as telling you like make sure that you're taking those breaks and prioritizing what you need to do so that you don't get burnt out. Um, these are just a few of the many questions that people may have about organization. By learning more about organizational skills and strategies, you can improve your productivity, reduce your stress, and achieve your goals more efficiency, efficiently. And like I said, I also have a free resource um, located at masteryourmoment.net. If you go there and click on the resources tab, there is an organization tool that you can use that talks about the definition, the qualities of an organizer, and that lists those specific tasks of um, supports and resources for you to become more organized. So check that out. I hope you enjoy it. Like, follow, and subscribe for more ways to master your next moment.